Hi, my name is Mariana Dinkova and I'm a marriage and family therapist and a relationship coach as well as a dating coach. And one of the areas I specialize in is sexuality, relationships, seduction, and turn on. And what can keep it hot between people on the short term as well as in long term relationships. And today I'm going to be speaking about mental foreplay. Mental foreplay is an often underused, extremely powerful technique. Uh, my definition for mental foreplay, <laughs> which I came up as a joke um, a while ago when, before I did a workshop on it with David Shade, was what do you do and what do you say before the date? So by the time she comes to the date, she's already wet. Meaning, our brain is our biggest sexual organ and how we play with somebody's fantasies, the kind of images we put into their mind about themselves, about us, about the things we can do together, about the meaning of our connection, is a fertile so so soil for whatever we want to grow out of it. And working with that big sexual organ can be so much fun. And so many play people underuse it. And equate foreplay with the thing you do once you're already physical. On the other hand, you're going to get a very different person to play with physically if you have done the proper mental foreplay, if you have already planted the right ideas in their mind, if you have already planted the right feelings and the right fantasies and the longing and the looking forward and the feeling nervous about it or depending which put what buttons you want to push. And it's a really fun game if it's done right and it can be quite the minefield if it's done wrong. Uh, mental foreplay gone wrong means usually overpromise, underdeliver, or do the wrong part kind of seduction for the kind of outcomes you want. So a very important thing about mental foreplay, since it is that powerful of a tool, is knowing what kind of outcome do you want with the person that you're playing it with. You might want anything from the scale from one night stand, casual lover, ongoing lover, long-time relationship, life partner. Completely different cocktail of mental foreplay to be used. Since there are three different kinds of mental foreplay, and that would be the sexual, the turn-on based, the one that wants to bring out their juice, the sexual fantasies, the turn-on, the techniques you put to work with their turn on and to the images you put of yourself for, so that they can look at you and go, ah, oh, in this very carnal way. Versus emotional, where they can feel safe, they can feel close, they can feel comfortable, or romantic, which is more about seeing a future with you, seeing you as a long-term partner, seeing you as this person they're gonna grow old with, maybe. And they're very different keys and very different things you can put to grow those different desires. So depending what on the desired outcome, whether you want to create a one night stand or something more long term and more serious, it's really important to pick the right elements of the emotional, physical and hormonal cocktail you're going to weave for that person, the kind of seduction web you, you two are going to create. Uh, Again, as I, was, as I was talking about it earlier, some of the worst examples about mental foreplay gone wrong came from a lot, some of my clients who came brokenhearted sobbing about the uh, almost boyfriend, they thought going to be husband, who by the second date was saying, you're going to look so beautiful pregnant, or this ring is going to look so beautiful on this finger, while well, meaning I want to shag you for two months. And the kind of ground that, develop, that develops in someone who then feels completely inspired on the romantic level while the intention of the person doing the mental foreplay was you're hot and I'm going to tell you what you want to hear but no, I don't quite mean it, but you are hot and I want you attached for a little bit. So depending on the desired outcomes, meaning what do you really want with that person? If you had what you wanted with them, what would it be? What are you really ready to offer? I can help you to design the specific cocktail that can really make them feel inspired to be there with you and share that without expecting too much, being disappointed, or being let down, or feeling undernourished. 
And they're very different cocktails depending whether you want a one night stand where you have to go for the straight sexual mental foreplay. You want them to be turned on. You want them to want you. You want them to fantasize about you for that night, not too much further. You don't want them crying in the couch for the next week, hopefully, depending what your ego is like. <laughs> but you want them to be quickly turned down, see you as a sexual object, see themselves as sexual, and you want to talk to the naughty part of them. Not to the professional, not to the mother, not to the Catholic part. You want to find the naughty kitty really quickly and only talk to that as well as be able to display that part in yourself. So that's going to be more on the one night stand scale versus with a more ongoing lover, you might want to keep the sexual feelings and continue growing the turn on, but also put it in perspective <clears throat> of the things you have done and how they make you feel and the things you will do and how they make you feel where you can put some emotional components, but be careful with the romantic ones. Again, there is the purely sexual, the emotional, and the romantic. Romantic one is more for the big guns. This is when don't use the, romant the, me the romantic mental foreplay unless you mean it. You can really break hearts there if you don't do it right. If you do it well. <laughs> but if you don't mean it. And there have been some quite horror stories I have heard from some of my clients who have been who received amazing romantic foreplay for people who didn't mean it, it was way too early in the relationship, changed their mind slash they were there for that month, and some people got really broken hearted from hearing things like, you would look beautiful pregnant, that, ri that ring is, looks amazing in your finger, I want to take you there and there, and so on. So in a minute I'm going to be speaking about specific examples, how to use different cocktail combinations of all, three, of all those three kinds, depending on the results you want, that make the other person hot, as well as put you in the right self. So that you, since you are part of the equation, and you want to feel good, feel good playing, and depending on your gender, I have noticed in a lot of my sexuality workshops, which I've been leading for the last number of years, it's much easier for a man, for example, to put the woman on this pedestal and she's hot and she's a goddess and she's so amazing and she's good looking and she's beautiful and she turns him on and there's very little about him and him being hot and him being amazing. And what about her feeling proud that she's got that thing on her arm? So there is also mental foreplay that puts the other person up in this beautiful hot light, as well as make sure that you also put some of that glow on yourself. It's hot when both people are feeling like sexy bitches plus open-hearted plus dedicated human beings, depending on the cocktail you're trying to spin. And I will share with you guys much more in depth some of the techniques and the uh, tricks and the verbal dynamics of how to really play with the mind of the other person tantrically <laughs> as well as dirty in my next product uh, coming up next year but for now I want to share with you some of the gems that alone would make a huge difference if you're not using them already use them and let me know how that goes I want to hear so some of the things about particularly sexual mental foreplay which is also really important to use in the romantic part. Again, the sexual can continue in all the parts, but the romantic one, don't use them with people you just want to as lovers, and definitely not with casual encounters. You can hurt. So again, as the sexual mentor foreplay goes, one of the things to verbalize is... What about the other person's looks? I mean, the usual thing about compliments is making you feel a certain way. So if you can note the things, that's the difference between compliments. You say, that's beautiful, that's hot, I like the way this goes, and I like the way that flows, depending on whatever about their body makes an impression in you. And next level down to this is, what about the way they do things is making an impression in you? So it's about the, the smile, about the tilt their hand, about their walk, about... And that's becoming much more personal because there is little they can do about their shell. Although, of course, it's a beautiful thing if they have a beautiful one. 
it's more personal when it is about how they are commanding and how they are playing with their appearance, with their self, with what about them looking shy, what about them looking turned down. So it's about noticing all the things and really verbalizing them. A next level down is what do those things evoke in you? So not just saying you have a beautiful this and this, but looking at your face blushing is making my stomach go and I can feel this heat inside. So this is, for example, on a sensation level, and this is two kinds of those. You can go sensation or you can go emotion. For one night stand, stay sensation. With a lover, you can put more emotion. With a partner, definitely put more emotion. So again, a sensation would be something like watching your cheeks blush gets me hard. An emotion would be watching your cheeks blush makes me want to hug you and protect you. Which is again an action you want to take, which is also a different kind. So there is sensation, emotion and action. And the emotion being it makes me feel warm, it makes, me, it makes my heart open, it makes me feel shy myself. So now we can be like two school children, I don't know what to do <laughs> or something. Um, another level of that would be also, again, taking the action further, would be from seeing that, what happens to me and what does that make me want to do. Uh, want to do to you, sexual foreplay. Want to do for you, can become more romantic. So it is partially seeing you this and this, or thinking about you. Makes me, want, makes me think of the next time I'm going to take you down, pin you in the wall and devour you. Ha. Or thinking about this and this about you. Makes me think about the next time, I, like about wanting to take you in a resort and giving you all these massages and treat you like a princess. Romantic. So also the, but also like putting all these things in the other person's head when they receive those messages or emails or statements or phone calls, you're already going for the places in them that are feeling the turn on, that they imagine you with a heart on, or imagine all these beautiful vacation places that we are going to go to. So again, back to the more sexual foreplay. So one thing is about observing, noting, and either going, what does that, hap what does that hap make in my body? Or what is that creating my emotions? And how does that make me feel about you? And also what is that making my fantasies? As well as in my impulses. By seeing you like this, I want to take care of you. That's romantic. Or the way you just bent over made me want to slam you down in the desk and have make love with you right there. That's more sexual. And again, being able to verbalize those things either when the person is there Text is wonderful, and there is a whole other levels that can be touched on, and emails. Emails can be underrated, but beautiful ways of keeping the other person turned on and thinking about you between dates, between the, time see, the times you see each other. And that's a very, very fertile time. And it's a time in which you have their mind to play with. So whatever you put there, they can fill out the blanks. And they can fill out the blanks with their ideal fantasies. When you tell them that you want to make them come like in an earth-shattering orgasm, they're going to imagine what that means for them. And they're going to trace their own neural pathways about what that would be like. And that's much more perfect probably than anything you can describe in great detail or actually do in person at all times. Of course, if sometimes, hopefully, you're able to. <laughs> but again, the, the ideas that you put, they're going to Photoshop. They're going to edit their own fantasies and ideal case scenarios and make it look better than you could have often made, <laughs> made it, even in person. I mean, ideally or comparable. So it's also good to leave it open. Like, I want to fuck you until your toes curl. For them, that would mean a particular sensation, a particular thing. You, don't, you can leave a lot of spots for them filling the blanks. Although there is also a lot to be said about describing the sensations and describing the actions that you're going to do to them. 
So either like as actions, I want to pull your hair down and bite on your neck until you're breathing hard and then you're asking for mercy or whatever that is in the whatever scenario you're describing. But again, it's describing the actions with how that make them feel and further what, they, what they're gonna want or what they're gonna be asking for or so on. So feel free to be explicit, feel free to put a lot of open space for interpretation as well as enough containers for the different fantasies. So apart from describing all the things that you can do to them, which can be extremely hot, and how that could make them feel, and what they're going to be begging for more or less at the end of it, uh, another angle to take is describing all the things they could be doing to you and how amazing that's going to be feeling and how turned down that's gonna make you feel and how, if you wanna go emotional or romantic, how much that's gonna bond, bond you to them and how much you're gonna be in awe of, the, of who they are and so on. If you wanna stay as a one night stand or a casual lover, how, that's gonna, how turned down that's gonna make you feel. And especially for men who often are more much comfortable in the giving mode, but would love to receive more. And they're not very comfortable, or not, not, don't have the skills of knowing how to bring out the giver in a woman, that can be a very powerful tool. This putting messages to her, which again, can be text, can be email, can be little notes, can be whatever mode feels appropriate about, I'm sitting in the office, fantasizing about your lips, going from my lips to down to my chest, to my groin, and I can't wait until dot, dot, dot. You know what I mean? Then that guy's gonna get a blowjob that night. And it's often it takes encouragement to train out the giving seductress in a woman, to kind of invite the part of her that is gonna devour him, versus only the part of him that is gonna be the pleaser. So again, have fun with both. Depending what you're more comfortable with, feel free, feel free to also play with the other one. Not only what you're gonna do to them, but also what they're gonna do to you and how amazing that's gonna feel. Another is interesting one to mention here is about pushing edges. People want to be comfortable, people want to be met, people want to be accepted, and they want to be expanded. And especially when it comes to turn on, there is that sweet spot, there's comfort zone, comfort zone, edge. So just around the edge, there is a real sweet spot about doing all those things that you want to, but they're kind of unfamiliar, but it's still nervous. One of the hottest lines I heard from someone around that one was, I'm gonna make you do the things you wanna do, but you don't dare. He got me with that one. <laughs> like somebody who can not only hold you where you are, but has the guts to take you to your edges and make you do the things you don't want to do, or you want to do, but you don't dare. So that's already a partner in crime. That can still be romantic, don't worry. <laughs> and so also like being able to verbalize either before the date, after the date, on phone, on text, over email, over notes, or in whispering, in their ear, again, mental foreplay can be in their presence. It's what you do, what you say, how you do it. About the edges that you want to push them to and how you're going to make them do that thing. Are you going to like push them to that edge knowing that it's hot and you're not going to take no for an answer? Or, of course you will, but it's about like holding them to the places where they have a hard time going to use themselves. So it's, a, it's about like bringing them to the places, to the naughty places or the trails that have been a part of their fantasy world, but it's also like a territory to be explored. That's gonna give you huge points. Another one is also playing with control or even before that, the places you will let them take you that you don't dare. The kind of things you would let them experience with you that is so nervous for you that usually people wouldn't, that I'll be careful with it, usually people wouldn't take me there, but you do because that can be easily go romantic. So for a casual lover, you can still use it around strictly sensual, sexual things. For a one night stand, don't think about it too much. For a life partner, you can use it especially around emotional content 
Like you're making me feel in all these special ways that I haven't felt for a long time or that very few people can. Don't use that with a casual lover. Definitely don't use it with a one night stand. Another simple one is remind me of. I'm walking here and I'm seeing this and it reminds me of the last time we were here. I am looking at this, smelling this, which reminds me of smelling your hair, which so and so. Or imagine or inspires me of. So I'm looking at the river or the bridge, which makes me want to be there with you, romantic, bend you over the bridge, sexual, hold your hand, emotional. <laughs> so depending also like where you want to go with it again. But also the fact that communicating with them that you're thinking about them, that they're part of your matrix of thinking, feeling, fantasizing hormones. You're walking through your day and there is this and they show up. Then there is that and they show up and communicating that with them. How you're at the office thinking of them and suddenly there is this and this that you have a hard time containing. If it's a hard on, sexual. If it's a huge grin because of how much you love them, romantic. Huge grin of how much you love them with the wrong person um, can again create a lot of damage, so be careful with that one. But people love hearing that they're part of your matrix during your day when you're away, and that would put you in their heads. That's gonna put you with that green or with that hard on in their head, so you're gonna become a part of their matrix. And they're gonna start fantasizing in that part. So, but the next time they see you, there's gonna be so much more emotional or erotic currency in the bank between you guys. And that one is fun playing with. And that can be sometimes even more powerful than what happens in the one-on-one, -on -one, in the actual physical contact. So you can share the emotions, the sensations, the fantasies, the impulses that them being in your mind, in your life, in your environment brings up in you. And there is a whole other set of more elaborate tricks you can use between dates to use to do mental foreplay or my joke about it to mind fuck them well. <laughs> one of the phrases I say that uh, quality mind fuck is one of the best forms of foreplay. And one of them is, for example, challenging them. Or, okay, a funny one is telling them not to do. Like, I don't want you, and that's, it, that's not for one night stand. That will be some, something more for ongoing lover or a partner. Like, I don't want you to masturbate for three days before the next time I see you. Or, I don't want you touching yourself at all until next time I see you. Or, I want you to masturbate tomorrow before I see you and send me a voicemail while breathing into the phone. Or, so that would be also something kind of homework, restraint-based. Homework can be, I mean, also like kind of more direct directions can be, I want you to come to the date when, they, when wearing a miniskirt, long boots, and no panties. She's going to, the whole day for her is going to be the miniskirt, boots, and no panties. So that's the kind of a thing that is already inviting not her homey self, not her friend self, but her hot self to the date. And she will be probably already semi-wet walking in there. So also that means kind of inviting her sexual being, not her friend, not her wonderful person that wants to create good things, but her sex goddess. So some of those things, especially telling somebody what to wear, creating surprises. One of the hottest ones I've heard uh, came from somebody who sent their, go their lover at the time to one lingerie shop where they had the, the, sh the shop owner came with an envelope with a certain amount of money and a different envelope with directions. So she had to spend a certain amount of money and in a different envelope with directions to a sex shop where she came and the shop owner came with a, another envelope with a certain amount of money to spend in the sex shop and directions for the next thing. The next thing was somewhere else. So until they finally met and she was like, wow. <laughs> so also don't use that for a very casual lover. They might be very, 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 very intrigued. But for an ongoing lover, yes. For a partner, absolutely. So that's kind of more in the sensual, sexual foreplay, which of course has also different things again from restraint, homework. You can also play something like 
Just please don't wear that red dress because I'm not promising that I can contain myself around you if you do that. She better be wearing that red dress after that. <laughs> but it's this kind of thing, either telling her what to do or telling her not to do with a threatened consequence of something extra hot that already can work or giving her homework of things to do or not to do before the date or between the times you see you, maybe with sending you text, text and pictures of what that is like or maybe not. But that's also a way to kind of continue engaging her sexual being between dates. You don't need to be there and your presence is gonna be keeping her on third gear nonstop through that little command that is playing in her, with her mind and playing with her hormones. So emotional mental foreplay. Emotional mental foreplay is more when you wanna create closeness. You can create friendship. You're creating more the trust me. I'm here for you, I appreciate you, I value your vibe. Some of my dating coaching clients are amazing at that. And without the sexual foreplay, a lot of them end up in friend zone. And they're amazing, beautiful people that have so much to give. And it's so important to be able to create that space. And I have worked with people that are amazing at the sexual foreplay, but cannot do the emotional. So there are a bunch of people who fucked, who fucked them once or twice, but they cannot sustain something longer lasting because they don't convey the actual value of the person, the connection they feel, the comfort there is there. It's kind of more friendship based, but it's also really valuable. It's I value you, I'm so glad you're in my, li in my life. Be you being here makes me feel better in the world. I thought that's almost going into the romantic one, actually. <laughs> and our romantic one, it is more, I call it heavy artillery. Again, not to be used easily, because that has to do a lot with projecting into the future. I want you to, I can see you in my future. I want to do this and this and these things with you. You look beautiful. You would look beautiful pregnant. <laughs> uh, you would look beautiful when you grow old. I can't wait to be there on your side. I want to do this and this and this for you, kind of, I will go to the end of the world for you. Or you are, you're touching places in me that are so unique and so special. And you're one of the very few people in my life who have touched this. Like with emotional poor play, you still make them want to feel, feel special. Romantic, you want to make them feel very special, like uniquely special. There are also things you can use in the romantic foreplay that are mental foreplay that are more counterintuitive but work beautifully. Like, oh my god, you make me so nervous. I never get nervous. How can you do that? Stop doing that. I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself when you're here. I, I cannot look at you. It's too much. It can, that can be also sexual, but it, it goes deep in people. Or I haven't felt about somebody like this for so long, it scares me. So that's also ways in which you can turn your nervousness into foreplay and it's powerful because then the other person wants to reassure you wants to comfort you but deep down they're going and you if you want that do it if you don't want that be careful with using this <laughs> again the nervous can be used also more on the erotic side the feeling wise oh i haven't felt those things for so long oh my god what am i gonna do with these feelings this scares me can be more on the romantic side as long as it feels like you're sharing a really deep authentic thing that is putting them in the light of this special person who can touch you in so special way so deep that you don't know what to do with yourself or you can also keep it with, with wow i haven't felt this for so long this is beautiful and that's also beautiful so again don't be afraid though if you go on the nervous side if you're nervous you can use that beautifully in a mental foreplay way and turn the nervousness into currency for what you want so mental foreplay can be such a fun and powerful selection of tools that you can use to create hot encounters or deep, meaningful relationships. So I hope that in this video so far, in which I revealed just the tip of the iceberg, you got a chance to feel how powerful the tools of mental foreplay can be. And if whether you want to create a turned on, hot, quick affair or a lover who can't wait to see you again and is okay that they're not your boyfriend or girlfriend, 
and it's maybe even okay to be one of many depending what you want to create or a partner who is deeply opening to you and sharing the depths of them for a future together and being really proud to be on your side. There are tools that can deepen, deepen and enrich and electrify any one of those things in the spectrum. So if any of those things have touched home for you, whether it is I'm in love with this person and I want to deepen our relationship even more and I want to make it hotter or I want to make it more emotional, depending on the particular formula you are playing with. Some people are much more comfortable sharing the hot but not so much the emotional and they want to bring more emotional intimacy and they want to open the heart of the person they're playing with more or other people are kind of more comfortable with the emotional which is also big in the post-feminist world you can tell her you love her but don't tell her she's hot because then you're objectifying her and a lot of my clients are struggling with that where they it's hard to ooze out your lust for a woman without feeling you're wrong and you're objectifying her and that's too sad because women can be very responsive to that and that's often the kind that people also work with is where we want to connect the emotional with the sexual so that they can fully express that in their relationships and have most of the richness of both so depending where you feel that your desires are, whether you want to deepen your marriage, whether you want to make it hotter or more intimate, or you want to navigate a few relationships and you're wondering what to, how to do it in the most graceful way. So the people don't feel misled. Nobody feels that you're over-promising and under-delivering, or they don't get it that you're actually more serious about them than, than you are exper ex expressing because you're shy. And you want them to be in the right, I call it orbit. Sometimes the sun might want to have more than one moons and you want to put the right people in the right orbit. If they're too close, they're going to burn. If they're too far away, they're going to, far, they're going to turn into a meteor. And there is an art and science to this. A mental foreplay is one of those powerful tools that can create a deep, rich garden of a long-term relationship that is juicy and hot and intimate, a hot playground of lovers and connection and intimacy to the degree of hotness and pushing boundaries as well as playground on any level. And depending where you feel inspired to join or to get more skills about, contact me. And I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear what you have done so far, what has been working, what your goals are, and how can I help you to take things to the next level, how you can juicify your relationships. I will be having a different product coming out next year, so stay in touch and have fun.